Welcome to this week's edition of Outdoors Online, a weekly webcast produced by the North Dakota Game and Fish Department. I'm your host, Mike Anderson. My guest this week is South Central District Supervisor Paul Bailey. Paul, we've got some northern pike spawning finally. We're late this year. Absolutely. We're a little behind schedule. Uh, Mother Nature threw a monkey wrench into our plans for this spring. Uh, typically, we're collecting our first northern pike eggs usually around that first week of April. We're about three weeks behind this year. Okay. Um, what are they doing back here, Paul? Uh, we, we set some trap nets in Lake Oahe uh, at, well, at Langler's, Beaver, and Cattail Bays. And we were looking for spawning northern pike or northern pike that still had their eggs in them. Uh, so we collect those pike with our trap nets and then we bring those fish by boat uh, right here at the Cattail Bay ramp right now uh, where we collect the milk from the males and the eggs from the females, combine those to fertilize the eggs and then those eggs will be transported up to Garrison Dam National Fish Hatchery where they'll be hatched uh, and then raised up to about an inch and a half uh, in size at Garrison Dam National Fish Hatchery. And then those are the fish that the, the North Dakota Game and Fish Department will transport then from the hatchery to all of our lakes around the state that uh, where we are, need those pike to, to manage those uh, pike populations. Okay, do we have any concerns with the uh, spawning being about three weeks late? Uh, it's definitely going to be a very uh, short, intense spawning period this year. Usually things are spread out over uh, a several week period where we've got lots of opportunity to collect those eggs. Uh, things are happening very fast right now as it's warmed up quite quickly on, on Lake Oahe. Right here at Cattail Bay, two days ago it was covered in ice. Uh, sure. Today it's wide open and water temps are, are up into the low 40s so uh, that's triggering these fish to spawn very quickly because the, the day length uh, is one of the triggers that tells these pike when to spawn and the day length told these pike they should have spawned about three weeks ago whereas the, the water temps is a second factor that dictates when these fish reproduce and the, the water temperature was obviously way too cold three weeks ago so uh, these pike have held off on reproducing till these water temps uh, got right and now it's a very intense spawning period. How do the fish look? Uh, good. Nor uh, Lake Oahe has definitely some, some fantastic sized northern pike in it so uh, the egg potential per fish is very good down here right now. Okay what is the goal? Uh, we're looking for 150 quarts of pike eggs uh, so that will enable us to, to raise the, the number of pike needed to, to meet our stocking requests uh, on a statewide basis. Okay, how about walleye spawning? Are we late with walleye spawning? Uh, walleye spawning is also running a little bit behind. Most of our, our walleye spawning the last few years has taken place uh, on the, the Van Hook Arm or Partial Bay on, on Lake Sakakawea has been really our, our, our bread and butter uh, for producing walleye eggs. Uh, we're definitely behind there a bit as well. Not as far behind as the pike yet. Uh, it looks like this nice weather might speed up that process of losing ice up there. So typically we're collecting uh, walleye eggs in Partial Bay that first week in May. We might be delayed a week or so, but uh, the, these, these nice warm temps with a little bit of wind behind it is, is certainly uh, helping remove some of that ice. Sure, how's the weather for you guys? Normally uh, you're out there in snow and cold Exactly, and I don't know if I've ever spawned in, in nicer, warmer temperatures than this. So if there's a perk to it, yes, we're a lot warmer doing it this year than we have been in years past. Right, this is the latest you've ever set nets and spawned pike? Right, this is about as late as, as we've ever uh, taken our first pike eggs. So it's, uh, it's definitely going to uh, present some, a few challenges at the hatchery, but I think they'll be able to, to deal with that and we'll still be able to produce the fish we need this year. Okay. Paul, how important is this process for both northern pike and walleye that we collect the eggs for our uh, state's fisheries? Yeah, it's uh, extremely important. A number of our fisheries, both walleye and northern pike uh, fisheries across the state, lack the ability to su sustain themselves through natural reproduction. They either don't have the suitable spawning habitat for those fish, or in many cases our lakes have uh, salinity levels that are too high for those eggs to uh, successfully hatch. So these northern pike and walleye spawning operations, uh, and then our, our partnership with Garrison Dam and Valley City National Fish Hatcheries are essential for maintaining a number of our, our important walleye and pike fisheries across the state. Okay, you guys aren't only spawning fish down here, you're also tagging some of these bigger uh Northern Pike. Tell me a little bit about that project. Exactly. This is a project we started last year in 2017. Uh, basically, we were the reason we're doing this project is to learn more about how anglers are utilizing these large trophy-sized Northern Pike. Uh, Lake Oahe has one heck of a, a pike fishery in it right now, and it consistently produces some of those 20 plus, 25 plus pound often uh, Northern Pike, and that's a really valuable resource. And we really didn't have good information on how anglers might be utilizing those fish, because that's a component to the fishery that we want to be around long term. So in order to maintain or have a, a, some, a good idea that this uh, trophy component to the fishery is going to be around for years to come, we needed to gain a better understanding on how anglers are utilizing those fish. 
So last spring, the spring of 2017, we tagged 75 northern pike that were uh, one meter long or longer. So that's about 39.4 inches long or larger. So really a trophy pike in anybody's book. Uh, to date, anglers have reported catching 19 of those 75 pike that we tagged last year. And they released 15 of them and harvested only four of them. So anglers encountered about 25% of those trophy pike that we tagged last year and only harvested about 5% of those fish. So I'll be the first to admit that's a pretty small sample size we're dealing with right now, but our preliminary results say that anglers aren't having a, an adverse uh, impact on our Lake Oahe's ability to maintain that trophy pike fishery. But this is a, a again, we wanna increase our sample size. Uh, so this is a project that'll be continuing probably the next three to five years on both Lake Oahe and Lake Sakakawea. And you'll tag a few more this year? Yeah, uh, it's, uh, we're probably not going to see quite the numbers we saw uh, last year given how late we are on the water and our, the, the number of those larger pike is already kind of declining that we're seeing uh, in our day-to-day -day netting operations. So uh, our goal, we might not hit that 75 pike again this year, but we'll tag all we see. A lot of good information, Paul. Thank you. Yep, thank you. Joining me now is Jerry Tishmack from the Garrison Dam National Fish Hatchery. Like Paul just said, we're, <laughs> we're way behind. We're three weeks behind. This is the latest uh, the Game of Fish has ever put nets in the water for right. spawning. How does that affect the national fish hatchery when raising these fish? We have the opportunity there to heat water. So considering this water is look 35 degrees, I'll take them back up there and I will, heat, I will bump them up gradually. Normally I'll incubate northern pike at 50 degrees and normally it'll take nearly 10 to 12 days to hatch them at 50 degrees. This year I can, I'll bump it up to 60 degrees and incubate them in nearly seven days. So that'll buy me nearly four or five days time, which will close that window a little bit. And uh, so it'll speed things up. Right. And with the pus, like I said, when we can heat water at the fish hatchery, we got cold water coming off the lake or we can heat water up. So we have lots of variability there and lots of options to do what we need to do to make things work. So, so no major concerns at the hatchery. With no, raising. not at all. Okay. And I'm actually filling northern pike ponds as we speak, which normally I wouldn't do it for until the eggs are nearly started to hatch. But with the cold temperatures that we've had and the warm weather that's coming down the line, hopefully it's, the productivity will get a jump start also in the pond. So. Um, explain that process. You take them back, you, you, you incubate them, uh, you raise them in ponds. Right. Uh, after they get hatched out, I will take them out as sack fry and put them into our lined ponds. Normally, that wouldn't be the case. When you have earthen ponds, I would, I would swim them up in a tank until they actually absorbed their yolk sac and started swimming, free swimming, looking for food. Uh, with the liners, now, considering there's no mud or silt in the bottom of the pond, I stock them out as freshly hatched fry, and they lay on the bottom of the liner until they swim up on their own, and instantly they can go on feed. Okay. So, when will they be released? And normally they, they're in the pond for three weeks, 21 days, and they should be nearly inch and a half, 1,500 to the pound, somewhere in that range, and then they'll get loaded and stocked out. So things are good. Right. And then we'll fill the ponds back up and put a crop of walleyes on top of those ponds again yet this year. So Sure. Well, a lot of good information. Thanks for joining me today, right. Jerry. Thank you. If you're looking for a place to go fishing, directions to lakes, or what lakes were stocked, Pick up a copy of the March-April North Dakota Outdoors magazine, or you can view the magazine online at gf.nd.gov. Also on the Game of Fish website, under the Fishing tab, you can also find fish stocking reports, directions to lakes, regulations, and much more. Go to the Game of Fish website at gf.nd.gov. For Paul Bailey, Jerry Tishmack, and the rest of the staff at the Game of Fish Department, thanks for joining us this week for Outdoors Online. We'll see you again next week.